Okay, so I had three similar items. Two of them are night lights. One's an outdoor light, uh, but they're all using a photoresistor for you know dusk to dawn or nightlight type activities. So I'm going to do all three of them in one video. First is this simple nightlight. Okay, so it's pulling 2.1 watts in standby mode. And can I even reach the, where is it there? 30 milliamps. Uh, let's see. Okay, that works. Uh, still 30 milliamps. Power factor. Did the wattage go down? That might have been just the initial wattage. Okay. So either way, it's using power. This almost does as much power when it's off than when it's on. Okay. Yep. All right. So then if we cover it, yep, there it comes on. And it's using the same amount of power. Whether it's on or off. Well, less. Less when it's on. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. And when it's on. Um, eight watts. Hundred milliamp box. I guarantee the last three years. Twenty below Celsius. Well, it gets down to forty below here. So I wonder if this would even work. It probably would. Okay, so I'm gonna time it. Uh, I got a light shining at <laughs> the sensor uh, just to see how long it will stay on once I turn it on. Okay, so there should be sufficient light and let's see how many minutes it takes. <laughs> seconds 240 two and a half minutes okay two and a half minutes for it to shut off wow all right okay so it's off the wattage drops oh it's not even pulling any amps it's still using a quarter of a watt but no amperages showing. Interesting. Okay. All right. So I got this nightlight, Intertech, and there's three screws on the back, and I've already taken it apart. Just got three simple screws. One of them shorter, goes in there. Simple opening, and the big plastic piece just mounts there and the light shines up into it. Prongs are the same width, so it doesn't matter which way you put it in the socket. This one, we've got Team Products, it's called. We've got two screws on the back. There we go. All right, so that pops off the top. Uh, Got a connector underneath there. These two wires actually just broke off. Uh, from there, and we have three screws, large one, two small ones. There's all the screws, there's the diffuser, there's the electronics. Um, these two are actually both bad. Um, the, all the LEDs have burnt out on them. Uh, redo them. 
and then one of these transistors was bad. Uh, so it wasn't even working after that, so I had to fix multiple things. The Still warm. Oh, okay. So this one, this does not come off easily. I actually had to put players on it and damage the damage this in order to pop it off. It was on there very tight. Uh, just a simple ring though. Okay, so I actually haven't taken this apart yet. Let's get a good stop moving. This looks, you know, similar to every single other one. LEDs and a chip controlling it. All right, simple plate, and then typical shell inside for a heatsink. Just go on here in a way that you can't put it on without going backwards and the answer is no it's you could put that on backwards so that seems kind of bad it starts at one goes from g backwards all the way to two whatever <clears throat> okay yeah, same housing as a lot of the other ones uh, those are just pushed in there. Looks like maybe there's some adhesive. No. No, this is plastic or something. Nothing special. All right. Okay, I'm going to go over how this photoresistor functions. So in full light, well, bench light, we have a low resistance about... 2K, 2, 3K, and we close it off, cover it up completely, or try to, and we get up into the mega ohms. So when it's dark, high resistance. When it's light out, low resistance. Uh, this one will operate the same way. All right, so then this one, where I'm not exactly sure whether it's a photodiode or a phototransistor, either way. Okay. So yeah, so if you darken it, you have high resistance in the mega ohms. Shine a light on it. Lower resistance. In this case, tens of kilo ohms. So for this night light, we have capacitive dropper, bridge rectifier, smoothing capacitor, and resistor. So the functioning of the uh, photoresistor is right here, and when it's dark out, there'd be high resistance, therefore it would pull up here and turn this on. The charge capacitor, turn this on. This is a Darlington pair. So this basically just allows for high, higher current gain than just one uh, transistor would by itself. When it's light out or light in the room, this would have low resistance and this would pull down to zero and shut this off. The current would then all flow through this 1K. So that's why, whether it's on or off, it's using basically the same amount of power. All right, so for this night light, uh, we have a similar thing going on. Um, was I had to diagram a little bit differently just to make it look normal. Uh, typically, just the way this was built, the line is actually on this spade. Uh, we do have a capacitive dropper, uh, we have a Zener C5V6. Uh, at this point I was measuring 1.5 volts AC, about 120. 
uh, socket, and then we have the diode for rect rectification, capacitor for smoothing, and after that you have about 2.1 volts DC. Okay, so in, that, in this area we're basically operating the same way we just did. Uh, this is the photoresistor over here. So when it's dark out, this is going to have high resistance. It's going to pull this down and shut this off. The current's going to flow through the LED. When it's light out, this will have low resistance. It'll pull it up and it'll turn this on and all the current will flow through this instead of the LED. Fairly simple, but either way, power is always, whether it's on or off, is always flowing through this resistor and you're always wasting electricity. So we have a fusible resistor, a varistor, and uh, we have a couple of things that are not used. Let me see them. On there, there's another line for a fuse two and a neutral, another neutral, obviously for a different configuration. Uh, going into a protractor fire, smoothing capacitor, typical. Okay, so then we get into a voltage regulator. Uh, here we have a Zener diode, which is there. And at this point, I was measuring about 5.5 DC. Out of the transistor, we get 5 volts on this rail. So this is making 5 volts. Uh, capacitor will be charging to 5 volts. Okay, so then we get into the function of the circuit here. So we have two either photodiodes or phototransistors uh, making a voltage divider uh, to pins on this circuit. Okay, same as the, similar to the other ones. Uh, when it's dark out, you have high resistance to this. It's going to pull us down to the zero and send a signal to there, depending on which one or both or however the logic works in here. Maybe it's waiting for both of them to go low. Uh, and then if it's light outside, there'd be low resistance here and it would pull it up to five volts and you'd get a high signal going in these two pins. So what this is doing is when you turn this light on, it automatically turns on by default. So the default setting is to send us power out through here to turn this MOSFET on which grounds out the other circuits for the lights. Um, and then if it's dark enough out, in about two and a half minutes, there's obviously a timer in here as well, uh, it will shut this off. Like I said, not exactly sure what, whether it's using just one or both to determine whether it's dark out or if it's a full high or full low or if it's looking at a range in between. Uh, a more gradient range of what exactly light and dark is. But either way, when it's dark, it turns us on. When it's light, it turns us off. Uh, up through, so we get the ground through the MOSFET to the sense resistors. There's an extra one on here for obviously a different configuration that's not used. Uh, and then you have your current controller, which is a BP5 one three one and then going through your LEDs um, and that's it <sighs> all right if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comments below